I'll be showing 11 new features for Windows 11. These are primarily from the 24H2 update. There's a couple both before and after that. So let's get started. The first new feature is a taskbar update, and this is to return the ability to add labels to your buttons. So I'm gonna right click on the taskbar and choose taskbar settings. Now I'll choose taskbar behaviors and scroll down. And just like you had in Windows 10, now you can have this combined taskbar buttons and hide labels. By default, this is on always, but I can say never. And now I've got all the nice labels right here. I can also choose to set this to when taskbar is full, so that will sort of customize it to when the taskbar is full. It'll combine the labels or not, but I'll just set it back to always for now. So this is now fully rolled out and available. The second new feature is a small one, but a top request. If I right click on any file or folder in Windows 11, now you have little labels next to the icons for cut, copy, rename, share, and delete. Same thing with paste. If you have something on the clipboard, now you'll have a nice little label underneath the icon. The third new feature is in the file explorer. So if I have the file explorer open right here and I wanna duplicate a tab because now you have tabs right here in the file explorer, I can just right click and choose duplicate tab and it'll open up a brand new tab set to the same spot where my previous one is. So now I've got two tabs and they have the exact same set of structures. The fourth new feature is switching between different tabs. So let's say I've got four tabs open here and I'm on the first one. If I do control tab, it'll switch me forward. So I can do control tab, control tab, and it'll switch me through those tabs. And then if I wanna go back the other way, I can just do control shift tab, control shift tab, and control shift tab, and I'm back again. The fifth new feature lets me drag and drop to the breadcrumb in File Explorer. So I've got this MP4 here, and let's say I wanna drag it to the desktop, I can just hover and then just drop it right there. And you can see it moved it right to my desktop. There's that teach module MP4. So you can just drag and drop to the breadcrumbs right here that you see, and you can move those files around or copy them really easily. The sixth new feature is energy mode. This is a big update to the old power saver mode. So I'm gonna do Windows key I to open up settings, and I will go into system here, and then go to power and battery right here. You'll see this new energy saver option, and this replaces the old battery saver option in previous versions of Windows. Now, energy saver works for both laptops as well as desktops. And you can say always use energy saver, so you can always have this on. Now, when you have energy saver on, it automatically will dim your desktop by about 30% or your laptop. But let's say you don't wanna have this on, you can say just turn on the energy saver when the battery level is at a certain level. It used to always come on, I believe it was at 20% or less, but now you can say, hey, turn on at 30%, 40% or 50% or always have it on. So you have more customizability. If you turn it off, you can say just turn on for certain areas. And similarly, lower screen brightness when using energy saver. So if this is on, it will lower it by about 30% in general. When energy saver is on, like I mentioned, displays are dimmed by 30%. In addition, transparency effects across windows are disabled. Most background apps are blocked except for critical categories. And then app syncs, things like OneDrive, OneNote, PhoneLink, those are often paused when the energy saver is on. The seventh new feature is a small one, but it's actually quite handy. I use it a lot with my laptop. Right here in the lower right, now you have this battery icon. And right now it's fully charged at 100%. But when your battery gets lower, that little icon will drain. So for example, on your iPhone, if you use an iPhone, you'll see that when your battery is lower, you'll see a little yellow indicator and it might show 60% or 80%. This little icon here works in the same way. So if I was at 50% or 40%, there'd be a little yellow indicator showing how full it was and I can hover and see exactly what that battery percentage is. The eighth new feature is generative erase in Microsoft Paint. So I'm gonna launch Paint really quick here and I'm gonna open up an image I have. So we'll open that on the desktop. There we go, this is an image that I made of myself, a little Lego mic, and let's say that I wanna do a generative erase on this BET Conference London. I just wanna have this be a nice, clean blue background. I will go to the Copilot menu here and choose Generative Erase. This brings up the little eraser here, and I can choose the size. So if I make this much bigger in terms of pixels, now when I go here, you can see that's a really big circle. If I made it small, it's a very small little circle. If I wanted a medium size one, it's a little bit bigger. 
But in my case, I want a much bigger pixelated circle. You can see that there. So I'm just gonna draw, just sort of scribble right around this bet conference and I'm just gonna fill this up hopefully with blue. So right here now I just say apply and you can see the little magic squares going. And very quickly, it did a generative erase on that. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. There's a circle right there in the middle. And you know what, I'm gonna get rid of my eyes right here. We're just gonna click on those and click apply. There's a little swirling rectangle. And hey, now I don't have any eyes in my Lego. It kind of looks like my eyebrows are not my eyes. So you can have lots of fun experimenting with generative erase in Microsoft Paint. The ninth new feature are updates to the snipping tool. So I will launch the snipping tool from the start menu. And here's the snipping tool. We'll just make this a little bit bigger. So here's the snipping tool. I'm gonna pull up a table. And here's an Excel table here. I'm gonna pull snipping tool and click new. And I'm just gonna draw my little square right over this table. That pops it into the snipping tool. Now I'm gonna go here and choose text actions. And one of the options it has is copy as table. This is brand new. So I quickly analyzed this and said, hey, there's a table in there. And I wanna copy all that text out as a table. And now I'm just gonna go into OneNote. And here's a new page. I'm just gonna control V to paste. And really quickly, you can see it actually pasted this just like a table. So from that snipping tool, again, this copy as table is a brand new feature, very easy to extract text from any image you have and just paste it as an actual table. The 10th new feature is a scrollable quick settings update. So in the lower right, I'm gonna choose my quick settings right here. And here are some of these quick settings, but it turns out I've got a bunch of them. So with my little mouse scroll reel, I can just scroll down or I can just click the little arrow here. If I want to turn on airplane mode, or maybe I want to turn on live captions, or I turn on the night light, really easy to quickly scroll up and down to enable or disable my quick settings options. The 11th new feature are updated compression options for files. So if I right click on a file or multiple files here, and I go to compress to, you're going to see zip file, but now we have 7z file, tar file, we also have additional options right here and I can go in and tweak even more updates. So if I go in here, I can choose my options, choose compression level, etc. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.